The concept of vampire is extremely intriguing. Like, how could anyone come up with such a fictional character who sucks blood for a living and is as fast as lightning, as strong as a boulder? While many might still believe that vampires do not exist in the real life, we think there must be something, somewhere, that proves the origin of the vampire, making their story not just a myth, but a considerable reality. Hi, and welcome back to our channel, where today we have for you a very interesting video that'll discuss the origin of vampires. You'll be shocked to know that their origin has roots in none other than Greek mythology. How unexpected is that? But before we get into it, please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe to our channel so you always stay notified of our future uploads. Now, let's get started. So, it is believed in Greek mythology that all these blood-sucking creatures stories trace back to Ambrosio, a young adventurer born and raised in Italy who always longed to travel to Greece to have his fortune told by the Oracle of Delphi. He reached the city of Delphi, which was home to the great temple of Apollo, the sun god. Pythia was the oracle, speaking the prophecies inspired by Apollo to those who seek the wisdom. On the arrival of Ambrosio, she muttered a few cryptic words. The curse, the moon, the blood will run. These words haunted Ambrosio the whole night, and he pondered around the temple, trying to figure out those words. There he saw Selene, a beautiful woman, the maiden of the temple whose sister was the oracle. She took care of the temple and her sister in the trance state. Both met before dawn every day and very soon fell in love. On his last day in Greece, he asked Selene to marry him and return to Italy with him to which she agreed, and they decided to meet before dawn next morning and leave. But Apollo, the sun god, was also fond of Selene and watching all of it. Not wanting his maiden to leave his temple, he cursed Ambrosio at sunset the day before that a mere touch of his sunlight would burn his skin. Distraught, he ran towards the cave of Hades, the god of the underworld, who heard his story and made him a deal. Ambrosio had to steal the silver bow of Artemis and deliver it to Hades, and Hades would provide Selene and him the protection in the underworld. In order to gain favor and to steal the silver bow of hers, he provided Ambrosio with a magical wooden bow and eleven arrows to hunt and offer those hunting trophies to Artemis. As a collateral, he had to leave his soul with Hades, and if he couldn't seal the deal, he would never meet Selene again and will be trapped there forever. Having no means of communication except parchments, and knowing that Selene would wait for him in the morning, he used his arrow and bow to kill a swan, and using the dead swan's feather and blood, he left a letter for her in their meeting place, explaining her the situation and promised to find a way out for them to live forever. Selene, heartbroken, read the letter and believing in Ambrosio, continued to work at the temple, and then a cycle started. Each night, Ambrosio would hunt a swan and write to Selene the poems of love, and leave them at their meeting place before sunrise, and then hid till sunset. On the final night, he had just one arrow and missed his hunt. Neither did he have blood to write poems to Selene, nor the sacrifice for Artemis. On seeing him weeping, Artemis was impressed by his dedication and took pity on him, and gave her the silver bow to write a last letter to his lover. In desperation, he took it and ran to deliver the bow to Hades. On realizing what had happened, Artemis cursed him, and his body started burning at the touch of silver. As a result, he stopped and explained his story to Artemis and begged for her forgiveness. Pitying, she offered to make him a great hunter, almost as great as she was, with the speed and strength of a god and fangs with which he could drain the blood of the beast to write his poems. In exchange for this immortality, he and Selene would have to escape Apollo's temple and worship Artemis forever. The catch was that Artemis was a virgin goddess, and all of her followers had to remain chaste and unmarried. So Ambrosio was never allowed to touch Selene again. They could never kiss, never touch, never have children. Agreeing, he left a note to Selene who on reading it left the temple before Apollo could notice. For years, they lived happily without touching each other, but Selene started to grow old, being immortal and was on her deathbed. Wanting her beloved to stay with him forever, he again offered her a swan as a hunting trophy and begged for the immortality of Selene. Fascinated by the years of dedication and devotion, she granted him the wish. For the immortality of Selene, he could touch her this one time only to drain and drink her blood. 
This would kill her mortal body, and then their blood mixed could create eternal life for anyone who drinks it. On very much insisting by Selene, he carried out the procedure. The glowing soul of Selene rose up to the moon from the limp body of hers, and thus she became the goddess of moonlight. Every night, she would reach down with her rays of light to the earth and finally touched her beloved Ambrosio, as well as all of their children, the newly created vampires who carried the blood of Ambrosio and Selene. And this is how the clan of vampires developed, as per the Greek theory. There was still other rumors that include sorcery and dark magic as the reason for vampire origin. And, of course, this is all considered as a myth, too, by many. The modern-day vampires are really established, having fangs, drinking human blood, not being able to see themselves in the mirror, and most importantly, they can be shooed off by garlic and by driving a wooden stake through their hearts. And then, there is the world-famous Dracula, an aristocrat living in a castle. Before people discovered how some particular diseases spread, it was more like the constant evolution in the concept of vampire were the association with diseases. As the family of the disease is the most exposed one of the diseased person, the infection was obviously spread among them at first. So people even believed that the vampires fed on their families first to gain their superior strength. Ridiculous, isn't it? But it is what it is. There's also a scientific side to the idea of vampires. Mythical beliefs are centered around the fear that the dead, once buried, could still harm the living, but they arose from a misunderstanding of how bodies decompose. As a corpse's skin shrinks, its teeth and fingernails can appear to have grown longer. Internal organs break down, a dark purge fluid may leak out of the nose and mouth. People unfamiliar with this process could interpret this fluid to be blood and suspect that the corpse had been drinking it from the living. But then there are historical actions that make us think otherwise. Archaeologists unearthed a 16th century skull in Venice, Italy that had been buried among plague victims with a brick in its mouth. The brick was likely a burial tactic to prevent strega, a word for Italian vampires or witches, from leaving the grave to eat people. A very similar thing happened during the spreading of the disease tuberculosis. In 1892, 19-year-old Mercy Brown of Exeter, Rhode Island, died of tuberculosis, which was then known as consumption. Her mother and sister were already dead, and her brother Edwin was sick. Concerned neighbors worried that the recently deceased Brown might be harming Edwin from the grave. But this does not end here. What they did was dug up the grave of Mercy Brown, found blood in her mouth and heart, and took it as a sign of vampirism, but definitely did not call it that. To save the life of Edwin, they took the heart of Mercy, burned it to ashes, and mixed it with a potion, an anti-vampire one, apparently, and made him drink that. This potion was meant to heal him, but instead, he died in a few months. This basically states that it was the lack of knowledge and wisdom that led to the belief and development of vampires in their clans. And with this, we come to an end for today's video. We hope you all liked it. Make sure you don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, and don't forget to mention in the comment section about your theories of the origin of vampires. We'll see you next time with another intriguing mythical video. Until then, goodbye!